Oh, boys. Oh, oh, boys. The lads thought... You guys thought you could get rid of me, huh? You thought you could get rid of the podcast where it's just me um, with absolutely no preparation. I have no idea what's going on. The the glare from the computer screen, a single... You thought you could get rid of this, but uh, it's back. We had last week, because I'm trying to become consistent with this again, we had last week the uh, episode with Cam which everyone thoroughly enjoyed. I'm pretty sure it was one of the best episodes, not only in terms of reaction, but also in terms of actual quality because it was two people and we had an idea about what to talk about. Instead of me just coming on and going, let me share my screen. The, th the thing is I can't even actually share my screen because I'm not smart enough to do that. Maybe I should, should I figure out how to share my screen? This is just a live troubleshoot. <laughs> All this is is work. This is just a man trying to troubleshoot something live. That's just this is just not not the best. Um I mean what what am I trying to do exactly? I want to pick my World Cup team. World Cup. Speaking of World Cup, is it just me or does it not is it not really hitting this year? Cuz to me it's not really hitting. And usually I'm so excited about the World Cup. And this year it's kind of like, eh, I'll watch it. I didn't even know when it started. I thought it started today and I thought it was too late to do my World Cup predictions. But apparently it's not. So, you know, that'll be great. All right, display capture. I got to go in incognito so no one steals my credit card. Which is, <laughs> it's probably already leaked anyway. So why does it matter? Um, it doesn't. But anyway, World Cup bracket. Guys, are you excited about the World Cup? Is Maybe I'm just a downer. Because I was honestly, I, <laughs> I had a, I don't have shower thoughts anymore because I don't think in the shower. I just kind of sleep. But I was thinking, maybe they put the World Cup because of FIFA. They, they did this in the winter because of that. Because of FIFA, the video game. Because usually the way that it goes is, you know... You get the end of the FIFA cycle and it's people stop playing around really March, April, definitely by June. And that's when the World Cup starts. But then by that time, there's just no interest. And so, I don't know. Let's let's click. I'm going to click right now on the play the FIFA. I did that so I can figure out where this is later on in, in the video. Play the World Cup bracket challenge. Um. Well, so anyway, I didn't finish the thought because I am a simple-minded individual. But I was saying, um, so they moved the World Cup to the winter because they said this will coincide with right after Team of the Year packs. Or right after the World Cup will be Team of the Year packs, so we get to have even more players. That's honest why I, why I think this FIFA, you're seeing such high-rated cards already and we're not even in December. Like you're, I'm seeing 90-rated cards just left, right, and center. And it's because of the World Cup, you would always get crazy players. I'm pretty sure the World Cup in 2018 was the only time I've ever packed Ronaldo. I've packed Messi three times. I think I've even packed him in a World Cup as well. But I've only packed Ronaldo once. What does that mean? Speaking of Ronaldo, where's that guy Where's that guy going? What? FIFA's website, this is the worst website I've ever seen. I'm just trying to click on, oh, here, I click play now. Okay, I don't. Do I really need a tutorial on clicking what team? Who is that? Sol Campbell who said it was between Brazil and Argentina or something. And he goes, I like France. I like France. Uh, okay. Qatar, Senegal, Ecuador, Netherlands. Um, I, I could do the whole thing that people love to do, especially in the U.S. during... March Madness, where they look at all the stats and they go, all right, so if I figure out, you know, based off this matchup and they played a team similar and the blah, 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 blah. I used to do that when I was 12. Then I quickly realized I'm never going to get this right. No one in the history of the world is going to get a perfect bracket. Maybe in the World Cup, it's a little easier because there are fewer teams, but still the number of permutations is so crazy. You're not going to get, you're not going to get it. Okay. That's why Warren Buffett would give a billion dollars to whoever got it because he knows it's it's just free marketing. It's not going to happen. Anyway, I also, by the way, have 
Cam's predictions because Cam will come back. He's just in California, like you mentioned, playing Omega Ball because he's actually good at sports, unlike me. Qatar, Senegal, Ecuador, Netherlands. Um, I have no idea about Qatar. They're finishing bottom of the group just because of uh, I don't like them. I'm going to go... I don't know if Kaladu Cool Ball is injured. I think he picked up a knock, but then he's probably fine. I'm going to go with Netherlands, Senegal, Ecuador, Qatar. Is that that sounds about right. Yeah? Sadio Mane has been pretty good. Netherlands has... Steven Bergwijn is actually pretty good for them. Depay will do okay. They've got De Ligt and Van Dijk at the back. Uh, who's their goalkeeper? Sillison? What year is it? Tim Krul? 2014, Tim Krul? Um... Yeah, I, I didn't do any research prior to this. Group B, the group of my team, Wales. Now, actually, this is a this is an interesting group. England definitely are going to top it, just without a doubt. Then it's USA or Wales. Um, part of me, because I'm pretty sure if I click Wales, an FBI agent's going to come through. The FBI agent has never even watched a single soccer game. You can't even name a single player on the U.S. men's national team, but he's going to go, you didn't think America would win? You didn't think America would be the best? Um, so I, I kind of feel like I'm obligated to go them. But then again, Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale. G Gareth Bale is going to lead. You know what? No, we're, we're changing this. I'm changing. Gareth Bale, England, U.S., Iran. <laughs> is that is that controversial? That has to be controversial. I'm here for the controversy. If I just go with the favorites, that's not fun at all. Group C, uh, I'm going Argentina, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Poland. I don't, I don't think Poland does too well in these. Tunisia, Denmark, France, Australia. So, the World Cup winner has not made it out of the group stage since 2002. 2006, Italy. 2010, they didn't make it out of the group stage. Wait, did, they even, did they qualify for the World Cup? Uh, anyway, 2010, for Spain. 2014, didn't qualify out of the group stage. 2014, Germany. 2018. Do you see where I'm going with this? Uh, with that being said, I think France is going <laughs> to France is gonna top the group. They're just so much better than the other people in this. Uh, can I even name a Tunisian? Wabri Kajri? Is that a guy? I'm going Denmark... Tim Cahill, Tunisia. All right. God, this thing goes on forever, huh? Group E. Wow, the Group E is pretty good. Group E definitely is the best. I'm going to say Spain, Germany, Costa Rica, Japan. Uh, okay. Morocco, Canada. Why is MAR for Morocco? What is MOR? Morcom? Canada, Belgium, Croatia. Oh, a tough one because... Everyone always thinks Belgium is the one, but I really don't think so. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Belgium, Morocco, Croatia, Canada. A bit of a shocker there. Do I think? Do I think Morocco? Ah, uh, uh, now nah, let's. Uh, I'll put Canada there. Morocco finishes bottom. That's how easy my brain can swing. Uh, Cameroon, Brazil, Brazil's going to top the group. Serbia, Switzerland, or Cameroon. Hmm. Um, I'm going to just guess and say Fabian Scher is playing so well that they're going to come second. Cameroon, Serbia's last. Oh my gosh, how many more of these do I have to pick? Uruguay, Portugal, Korea, Ghana. I did it. That is, uh, that'll be important in a second. So now we have Netherlands, Netherlands versus England. England win that. Argentina, Denmark, Argentina wins that. Spain, Canada. Oh, dude, I'm going Canada all the way. Uh, Brazil, Portugal. Ooh, the battle of the Portuguese countries. Brazil wins. Wales, Senegal. Wales wins. France, Mexico. Mexico wins. Belgium, Canada. Wow. I just call Germany, Canada. It's the battle of the flags that are inverted, sort of. Uh, I'm going to go with Belgium, Uruguay, there. Okay, we're almost there, boys. England versus Argentina, Argentina, easily. Canada versus Brazil, Brazil, easily. Wales, Mexico, I'm going to go with Wales, and then Uruguay. And now we've got Argentina, Brazil, 
Wales, Uruguay. What a final four, huh? Argentina wins, and then I'm going to go Uruguay, and now it's... Look, I've got... Why am I such a South America stan? Do I just stan South America? Maybe I need to change this. I'm not liking this. I'm going to go with them. I'm going to go with Spain. I'm going to go with Argentina. Too many... You can't have too many Latin American countries in the final four. We've got to have some from European representation. Uh, Uruguay wins, and then Argentina, Uruguay. I'm going to go with Argentina. So, you know, that's... If if I got that wrong, if it was going to be Brazil to beat Canada... or to, So, Canada wins, then Brazil wins, then Brazil wins. And that's the only thing that I got wrong in this whole thing. Um, just know that it was your fault, Sebastian. Save. I'm not creating a FIFA account. Do I have to create a FIFA account? All right, whatever. I'll create the FIFA account so then you guys can play along. But I'm actually interested if you guys want to do your own and then share it in the comments who you think is going to win. Because um, who knows? Maybe it'll be a fun little game. We all just go together and say, hey, hey I got it wrong too. Oh, you got it wrong? Wow, we're all wrong. Why do I think... So this is the one, the one thing though. Why do I think Uruguay is so good? Because they have midfielders in form. And I think Darwin Nunez is actually going to have a good World Cup just because he's pacey. And it, it, the World Cup is so different than normal football with club soccer because the teams don't have enough time to prepare. That it's usually more defensive from what I've seen. And you can't really have crazy strategy. It's more like if you have a solid midfield, solid defenders... And then you just have a striker who goes off and becomes, you know, has has a really good tournament. That's what wins you everything. So, you know, Miroslav Klose, how many goals did he score? Mbappe was really good. And then they had the midfield 2018 of Pogba and Conte running everything. So that's, that's my opinion. David Villa, I think that was 2012 actually with the Euros. But whenever David Villa was completely destroying everyone, you just have these... Uruguay, Diego Forlan. Yeah, Jabalani edition. Um, that's sort of my opinion about those things. Okay, um, now that I'm out of breath, because I forgot how podcasting, you have to keep talking, especially when it's one guy. I also, I would get so, I get so excited that I start just going and going and going, and I just need to calm down and relax. Uh, if you guys want Cam's predictions, he actually has Qatar winning the entire thing. It's crazy. He has them winning, and then they, so they win the group stages, and then everyone forfeits, and Qatar is the winner. We'll, we'll see if that happens. I wonder how many. What are the betting? What's the betting predictions on this? Betting predictions, World Cup. Well, I I don't. I'm not a sports gambler, as you can probably tell. SportyTrader.com. So, uh, Qatar or draw? Just give me the plus minus. That's all I want. Betting lines World Cup. You know what this is? This is this is seriously just okay. Let me share my screen. <laughs> uh, so World Cup winners odds. Number one is Brazil at plus three fifty. Argentina plus five fifty. France plus seven hundred. Who's the lowest? Got to be Costa Rica. Wow, people really think Qatar has the edge because of the home field advantage, huh? Costa Rica is at plus 75,000. And then Australia, 35,000. Qatar, 25,000. I mean, where is Uruguay in this? Because Uruguay really, plus 4,000. That's not, I would take those odds. So what does that mean? If I bet 10 bucks, I'd win $400. If you bet 10 bucks on Belgium, you would win $1,800. Seems pretty good. Ten dollars on Brazil, you'd win thirty-five bucks. That that's reasonable. I can never get betting odds right. So, um, World Cup top goal scorers. Ooh, I guess that's a good one. Harry Kane at plus seven hundred. Mbappe, you know Messi, but Benzema's at sixteen hundred. But didn't he just get injured? He's not, so he can't play. Where Charleston at plus twenty-eight hundred seems way too high. Who's Guillermo Pedro? Who the who? What is a Guillermo Pedro? I don't know who that is. Pedro Guillermo. He plays for Flamengo. Oh, that's why. 
Okay. Well, maybe he's going to have a crazy World Cup. Kai Havertz at plus 4,000 seems very high for him, which is the same as Lewandowski, but that just shows you how much people don't really trust. They don't trust the squad. Um, it's It's really... This is just so... I used to really be into this kind of thing, but now I just look at it and I can go, oh, I could see them doing well. And then I'm like, ah, could I really see them doing well? I have no idea, guys. Well, I'm a guy with a hat. That's it. I just got a hat. Underneath this hat isn't a bunch of great ideas most of the time. Brennan Johnson at plus 8,000. Some of these are just so, so far-fetched. Yusufu Mokoku at plus 10,000. That... That just makes that it's, if you bet on that, I would. I don't understand how that's plus ten thousand, and then I don't know South Korea winning is plus twenty five thousand. That seems way more plausible than the Yusufu Mokoko getting top goal score. Like he's not going to play enough. I don't. <laughs> there's no chance. Um. You know, I'm kind of forgetting that Vlahovic. Wow. Now that I'm looking at certain players that I've forgotten exist, like Vlahovic and Mer uh, Mitrovic could be a crazy partnership that takes Serbia way further than I... Because again, Mitrovic on good form. Vlahovic has not, as far as I know, been playing too well for Juve. But a chance to pair them up together. I have no idea what they play together. Do they play a 4-4-2? The Serbian... Can I name a Serbian mid... Uh, Malikovic Savage. This is just can can LT name players that he hasn't thought of in a long time. Um, yeah, World Cup. I'll watch it. I think, if anything, it's more just the experience, right? Because it was very similar during COVID when the Premier League came back, and it was just I I remember Chris MD posted a he put a tweet tweet out that was just I like all all what boys want or something like that i don't know and it was just a tweet a picture of the schedule and it's like game after game after game after game and it's almost you get so overwhelmed with all the different games that you're like yeah this is this is what i want i want to watch all these games i know i can't physically watch all of them but i just having that and set out as your entire day it makes you feel kind of like you've got something going on, I think, uh, which is a little, you know, I'm finding as I, I'm getting older, I'm becoming less of the sports guy, mainly meaning I used to be so into any sport. Like all I would do on a Saturday is watch college football the entire day, or even a couple years ago, it would just go. I would wake up at 7.30, have to watch the Premier League game at 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Have to watch the game at 10, then watch the game at 12.30. That would end. I'd kind of chill for a bit, and then I'd turn on the college football game at, like, I'd see the ones ending at 12, which aren't that interesting, then watching at 3.30 the big game in the SEC. Then maybe a game around 5, but those games are kind of meh. And then watching the game at 8. So I'd literally just watch sports from 7.30 a.m. until the last game would end at like 11.30. And now, I don't... Today, it's a little different because there was no Premier League or Bundesliga. But I didn't watch a single snap of college football. I didn't watch anything. Just because it's such a huge time sink. Like, you sit... Because you sit there and you're watching these guys do things. And you're kind of like, yeah, I I'm in it. And I think it's different if you're at a bar... Or with friends and kind of in a social environment where you're not really watching the game, but you're kind of watching it. And then the whole point is to have a conversation with your friends and it's kind of just on in the background. I think that's actually fine. But for me, I, would, I wouldn't I would hang out with friends for the most part. I would just be like, I'm focused on the strategy of the game. And then it would mean that I would be really knowledgeable knowledgeable about different players and strategies and whatever. But it didn't, it didn't serve me. It didn't make me better at anything, right? Because I think if I were a professional sportscaster or someone who would just watch games and then comment on them, that would make sense. That's That sounds fine. Because even doing this, 
I was sort of hesitant to do a World Cup predictions video because I'm thinking, I'm not qualified for this. I want to give my opinion just to sort of show that, you know, anyone could do this. And it's similar to in college basketball. I would always, you know, do the March Madness bracket and then you'd give it to like your someone who doesn't watch any any sports, any college basketball, and they do their own pick. And they have a sense of, oh, okay, if the number is lower, that means they're a better team. And it's usually like they they do just as well in their predictions. It doesn't mean because I watched all those games and got all that knowledge and had more sports knowledge that I would then be able to predict something and win money. Money shouldn't be the main target, but at least you know getting some worth out of it other than just being able to, in my head, go, well, I've got all this great information. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just a... I, would, I tried to limit time sinks because I don't, I don't really want to say my job is a time sink because I, I like my job. But you, you do your job during the week. And then for me afterwards, after work, I'm so tired that I might have the energy to do something. But most of the time I'm I've just been talking the entire day and I've been thinking and I'm my, my brain is just tired. And then on the weekends, I want to do something that, you know, gets me, it makes me feel rewarded and it used to be sports and now it's not so much. And I think that's actually, it's, it's a better thing because what I, what I find is most enjoyable is making videos, making content or really making music. And I was trying to figure out like, okay, why I was dissecting it. Why do I like doing that stuff compared to I'll, I'll be really excited to watch a sports matchup if it's good and I can get just caught up in watching it. And I'm like, okay, why, why don't I feel good after though? And it's because I don't really have any takeaway from it. Like I haven't created anything. You watch a game, you you enjoy the anticipation of the game, you enjoy watching the game throughout and hopefully seeing some highlights, but then after it's done, if you're there, you have the memories and everything. Like when I went to the Roma game, when I went to the Hamburg game over the summer, that was really great because I can, I can think back to those memories and experiences, not just of the game, but like going to the game, going on the train, being surrounded by these Italians and loud Germans. It's all part of the experience which then you can call back on and that's that's great. But if you just watch from your from the seat of your house, from the seat of your house, from the seat of your couch in your house, you might have some memories of cool plays, but for the most part it's just so so monotonous because it's the same thing and you're just watching a different game. It's like a treadmill of games. Treadmill of sports. Like I've I've seen I've seen these plays, I've seen these patterns, you know. So I was like, okay, so I don't have anything because I'm not active. I'm just watching. I'm too passive. And then I'm also not really getting anything out of it at the end because I compare that to another thing I used to be, I don't like addicted is too strong of a word, but I used to really like, and I just finished playing video games for like three hours. I play a lot of Valorant and last night, I was watching, I was just watch live streams and I'm probably going to do it when I go downstairs, but I watch live streams of, um, or live stream clips of really professional, really good professional Valorant players because I want to go, I, I'm really curious about the strategy. And so that is different than just watching a game. Oh, let me rephrase playing Valorant after training, training, cause I'm a pro by watching someone else play and picking up like their strategies and how to get better then you know watching your then putting that into effect by playing is different than just watching a football game because i'm not going to play football right but i can play valorant and try to get better so then again it's like what is the difference between that and something that i f i feel enjoyment out of at the end because i do enjoy again playing valorant but afterwards i feel like well that was a waste of time I just wasted two to three hours. Like I don't feel good after playing, after having played Valorant for three hours. And it's mainly because I don't have anything tangible at the end. Whereas I compare that to I'll spend, I'll spend like three or four hours working on music or two to three hours recording a, a FIFA video and then editing it and having it out there. And honestly, 
for a lot of the time during the video, during the recording process and during the editing, I'm kind of like, eh, this is all right. I can, I can get by doing it, but I don't feel that passionate about anything. There are definitely moments, especially in the music part where I'll, I'll be, cause it's, it's not obvious when you're done. With a FIFA video, it's kind of obvious when you're done, and I have a pretty good understanding of the different timeline and segments that I need to do. Whereas with music, it's more creative and more on the fly. With music, you'll definitely do something where you are just messing around with different uh, tuning systems or whatever, and you come across something that sounds really great, and you just think to yourself, wow, that was that sounds so good, and I'll just keep listening back and listening to it over and over again. That is really cool, but those happen few and far between. The point I'm trying to get at is at the end, you know, the the middle, the anticipation, I break it into three steps. You have the anticipation of it, you have the actual action, and at the, at the end, you have the end result. If I compare watching sports to, you know, making music, the anticipation I think is probably equal during the activity may be equal, but honestly, if anything, it's more tilted towards the sport, just watching sports. Cause I almost get intimidated about, um, Oh, I've got to make this music and I, I, I need to make it good. I'm such a harsh critic of my own music that I'm like, ah, it's, it's not good. And then at the end, the end result with sports, there is no end result. So I have nothing except for the knowledge that I gain from it. Whereas with, music i will i will feel i'll get like high and i'll just i keep just thinking about it and thinking about it and it's so much higher than anything else um the worst part about recording this by yourself is when the camera when the camera shuts off i have to go turn it back on i don't actually understand why the camera it used to be able to record up to like 48 minutes and now it stops at 27 um gonna have to have a talking with someone i wanted to get another camera because uh, i felt so far away and i think maybe it'd be nicer to have two cameras but then that would just mean so much editing and having to sync up everything although that's not true at all now that i think about it it wouldn't be true because you would just you would just have two clips and then two audio tracks and that'd be fine um this is kind of like when I when I coach my team up, I say things and I think do these guys do people just listen to me and go this guy is such an idiot like why is he just saying these silly things over and over again? The good thing about with them because I I'm their manager they can't actually say anything in return, so I got them there, folks. Whereas you guys you could go this guy's an idiot and then just stop watching the video. Um, please don't do that though. Just entertain my thoughts it's been a while since i've done these podcasts and it's hard for me it's hard for me to talk and really go through oh this has i get sidetracked when i'm on the computer so this has the group odds it says netherlands ecuador ecuador is second favorite really who was on the ecuador team that i'm not really thinking of caicedo for brighton he's good uh who I, I cannot, I can't think of anyone. Senegal plus 500. I feel like Senegal has a good shot. Qatar plus 1600. England, then US is at 550. So US is a, has a better shot than Wales. I don't really agree with that. Argentina, Poland, Mexico is at plus 500. Poland has a plus 450. Let's see, who's, who's on the Polish team? You've got Lewandowski, you've got Zielinski, you've got Szczesny, Frankowski, I'm definitely forgetting someone, but I mean, the Mexico team has Lozano. I'm assuming Ochoa is going to play because he's a constant. He always plays. Uh, hmm. Can't really think of. Is Chicharito playing? Okay. Maybe, maybe that Mexico pick wasn't the best one. I'm going to guess Guardado's in there. France, Denmark, Australia, Tunisia. That one makes sense. Spain, Germany, Japan, Costa Rica. I put Japan at the bottom. Yeah, I don't know if that's right. Belgium, Croatia. Wow, they are disrespecting Canada. They put Canada at plus 1,200. No, I got to rep the maple syrup, boys. I, I'm putting them higher. Brazil, Switzerland, Serbia, Cameroon. 
I'm pretty sure I put that the same. Although now that I remember that Vlahovic and Mitrovic are the strikers, I feel like Serbia could could be a little bit better. Portugal, Uruguay, South Korea, Ghana. Okay. Um, oh, they've got a ton of stuff in here. So, World Cup. Oh, World Cup past top goal scorers. 2002 was Ronaldo, R9. 2006 was Miroslav Klose with five. 2010, there are four players with five. Forlan, Wesley Schneider, David Villa, Thomas Muller. Forlan had five, and they were all crazy knuckleballs. How did Wesley Schneider get five goals from midfield? 2014, Hamas had six? Man, Hamas has the weirdest career. I still... I remember that so well. I remember him taking that pen against... Was it against Brazil? I think it was against Brazil. And then... Because it was the game that got knocked out, right? And then he he had this giant grasshopper on his shoulder. That was so crazy. Harry Kane had like 17 penalties in 2018. So that's why he was top. Um, I digress, boys. I'm all over the place here. Uh, we've only been going for 31 minutes. It, it is hard to do a... a podcast by just yourself because you just end up rambling and i'm not one that normally talks so much i guess what's the main thing i usually talk about oh well i, th I think valorant is cool and I, I already touched on this i touched on this in one video but i didn't really do it in a podcast so it's probably nice to break it down because there was a period where i i thought i was just going to completely switch from fifa to valorant and in my head i was like how do i you know, how do I do this without just alienating the people who like FIFA? And also, I I don't... A game like Valorant is fun, and I think there are a lot of good things about it, but from the viewer's perspective, unless you're just a really good Valorant player, like, you can't just be funny and play Valorant. Because I'm not, I'm not going to be the best FIFA player out there, but there are different challenges and different ways to be creative with it that don't exist with Valorant. And if you guys don't know what Valorant is, Valorant is basically Counter-Strike and Overwatch com combined. So you've got five players on one team, five players on another. Each player has an agent, and so you have special abilities depending on what you choose. Um, you have the attackers, you have the defenders. The attackers try to put a spike on one of two or three bomb sites, and then you have to defend it. So it's similar to Counter-Strike, but then the abilities are coming from Overwatch. And I saw, because it was released, Valorant was released in 2020, like around March or April. And I'm trying to remember how I found out about it. I think it was because I watched a lot of, it was right when the pandemic happened and I was on Twitch. And I watched a lot of people who were um, playing Fortnite, because I used to watch Fortnite streams all the time. And I watched people come over to Valorant because they were... It was in the beta at that time and they were trying to really promote it by having beta codes. And I was watching it and I'm going, man, this is so similar to, this is just like Counter-Strike, but a, a brand new area. Because funnily enough, in 2018, yeah, 2018, I just started watching Counter-Strike and then I got really into it. And I would go to bed and just watch Counter-Strike live streams because of the strategy of it. It was so much, you know, whereas with, with FIFA... You don't really have much strategy. Like you have individual players who are good, but it's just so far from actual soccer that it's it's completely different games. Whereas with Counter Strike or Valorant, there is no real life equivalent of it. It's just a video game, and you have teamwork that is really cool to watch because that's what the whole synergy about a different team and how they work together. That's that's what I'm most interested in. So I would watch a lot of Valor or I watch a, a lot of Counter Strike, and you would start to develop. You know, you could see how an individual person plays and like their tendencies and how a team will play compared to another. And I was like, this is really cool, because there are so many different people to learn about and teams and organizations, and strategies. A lot of storylines that went into it, and it's just in general a cool game. So anyway. I was watching a lot of that and I was playing some Counter-Strike, but I, I couldn't really get into it because it was so hardcore and the game had been out. I mean, Counter-Strike Globe, uh, yeah, Counter-Strike Go had been out since 2012. So I wasn't going to become pro in it. And 
I mean, in the back of my head, I always knew I'm never going to be pro in any of these video games just because I don't have the time to dedicate to it and I'm not that good. I'm good enough at video games to play them and be passable, but I'm never going to be professional in anything. But um, I don't know. I think in my head at that time, I saw, I knew Valorant was going to be big. So I kept watching all the, I kept watching all these streams to try to get one of the drops and finally i think that i think i know the date it was april 17th i believe and um i was playing counter-strike and then i got an email at like nine or ten at night saying i believe it was a friday that's how sad my life is i was playing counter-strike <laughs> on a friday night um and i got an email basically saying at like 11 hey you got the code whatever you can play valorant now and i thought this is it this is it i'm going to dedicate the next six months i'm going to become good at valorant i'm going to become good at shooting because i knew i knew the gist of it you have utility and everything that you need to use but it's a shooter like if you're really good at aiming you're going to be good at this game and i'm like all right i'm going to just dedicate the next six months to that and so i really not for six months but i would just i would get off work and then i would just start doing aim training in kovacs or there's another one aim lab and I got pretty good at it. If you guys watched that video about, I thought I was going to go pro in Valorant. You can see that I was, I in some drills, my aiming is even better than professionals, or it was. Because I just practice it so much and so much. Does that exactly translate over to playing a game like Valorant? No, because you've got movement and it's not just clicking on heads. Um, but yeah, I, I got to a point where I was like, that's pretty impressive. And I kept grinding it, grinding it. And I got up to, I think I got up to plat two or plat three, which is actually where I am still plat two. But it's so with these games, the learning curve is like, because I was also really good at Fortnite right when it came out. And I thought, oh, I can go pro in Fortnite. And then it quickly, all the 13 year olds figured out how to play the game. And they just have so, they're so much faster and so much better at learning things that I was like, yeah, there's, there's no shot. I have no shot at doing well with this and that's kind of the sad thing about becoming old you suddenly you realize that you're not going to be nearly as good as all the younger people but then i can teach them how to share their screen at work so then i'm i'm deemed the smart one uh anyway i i was playing because i don't think i did that much which is almost a bad thing i didn't do as much fifa recording during the start of the pandemic as i thought i would and the other day I was thinking it was because I was getting burnt out on FIFA, which is probably true. I definitely was feeling like I'm just doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's sort of what life is. But then also I think I was trying to become a Valorant person because I, I was like, this is the scene. It's a new scene. You're definitely going to have people come over from different games who have advantages because they play games that the you know, going from FIFA to Valorant doesn't make sense. Whereas going from Counter-Strike, going from Overwatch, going from one of those games to Valorant does make sense. And I always, I initially thought, oh, all the Counter-Strike guys are just going to own, which sort of was true because there was a lot of good strategy, but Valorant is actually so much different compared to Counter-Strike with the game and the strategy and how everyone plays. You know, Counter-Strike, you can just you you it's the same game that it's been forever and they never change anything whereas with valorant they change it every two months which makes it way more interesting in my opinion and that's why i think valorant's going to be a, a much bigger game than counter strike ever was um yeah so i feel like it's i try not to regret too much but i also think that i could have done more during 2020 for fifa and for my channel to to help grow because I see other people, and it's not necessarily with FIFA, but even the Sidemen, for example, like in 2000, what was it, 2019, they did the last charity match before this year. And I think they had, I don't remember what they had, maybe two to five million subscribers on their channel. And then since then, they've just blown up. And it's a lot of people. I think because people were stuck inside, they ended up finding things. And TikTok drove a lot of views over there. And also just in general, the, the younger population gravitated towards social media, which I always thought would happen. Um, I always feel like I'm too, I'm too late. Like you're never too late, which is the issue. 
if you're watching this now and you're like, hmm, I kind of want to do a YouTube channel, but I think I'm too late. You're honestly never too late. I watched a video in 2016 or 2017 because I thought I'm too late. And then it's talking about how in 2018, X number of people will be on the internet compared to when it, whatever year I was watching that. And I go, ah, yeah, that sounds nice, but it's, I'm too late. And it's just an excuse. Like you think about Mr. Beast in 2015 or 2016, the guy was just counting up to a million <laughs> in his room. And now he has a hundred million subscribers. It's, it's wild. It's really, it's sort of inspiring, but at the same time, when you see something that you feel like you missed the boat on, um, it's almost a little bit deflating. But then again, you have to think, you know, it's, just because you didn't succeed immediately doesn't mean that you can't succeed. You, know, that you just have to be smart to try different things. I think for, for, for part of me, it's hard because I don't want to alienate the the viewers. And I I also, whenever I do a video like the the professional video, the, the professional soccer player versus amateur one that I did with Cam, like those take way more effort than doing a FIFA video. And the payoff the payoff in terms of views is not not as good like the moist keen <laughs> player view that i did i think has like a thousand something thousand two hundred video uh, views whereas the amateur versus professional soccer video has like 200 so a thousand views difference and it's not only about the views but it does play a big role because if i'm not getting enough views on it then i feel like oh the they're not interested in watching this. And I don't want to make content that no one's interested in watching. Like that's the whole point of being a content creator is making videos that people are going to be interested to see. So you're sort of failing your main job. I definitely get some satisfaction out of those, but they're also, those videos are hard because, you know, I've got two cameras, we had to film and then it's not so cut and dry as like, I know what I'm doing. You have to, you also think about the editing, like the editing for one of those takes two to three hours, whereas the editing for one of these takes, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, however long you want it to be. And it, it comes with time, but I, I'll watch like a Chris MD video and I'll watch, you know, he does the, he does just a lot of free kicks and the cool, he goes through so much editing uh, that must take him a day or two days. And he probably hires someone now, but you know, I, I remember back in 20. I sound so old. Am I that old? I guess it was seven years ago, which is really weird. What it's it's 2022. The first YouTube video I ever posted was in 2014 December, December 2014. So in the next two years, I will have been on YouTube for ten years. That I I can't even fathom that. Like that doesn't sound real at all. Ten years. Because I was also late to YouTube. I started in 2014. I think I started watching it in 2009, but I didn't do anything until 2014. And then that's just a long time. That's a long time to play FIFA. <laughs> no wonder my brain is melting. The other thing through all this, I used to think I was really smart. I, I was smarter and I could talk and I could make sense and, you know, words were fine. And as I'm getting more accustomed to doing this podcast, you know, I'm not saying and stumbling over my words as much, which is also why I need to do these more because it helps with my ability to present, which is important. You should not just ramble and talk nonsense. Um, keep on the same track. Whereas my, my brain kind of, I almost get ADHD when I get on these because I just, I don't think it's because I have ADHD or anything, it's because I'm probably insecure and want to just jump from thing to thing to make it interesting. That's why having a single person and just being able to interview them takes all the pressure off. That's so I'm good at interviewing people because I have no pressure. My questions are just, I just do layups. That's all I bounce off with someone. I give them a layup. I can see where the conversation's going when I don't have to talk. It gives me a chance to sit back and analyze and go, okay, where do I want this to go? Whereas when I'm talking, <laughs> when I'm talking and I, I feel like everything's on me, I just start, it's like, I'm, you know, those dreams that you have when you're out of control and driving a car. Cause I, I know everyone gets these. That's how I feel. I just, I'm just like, where am I going? Where am I going? Left, right, left, right. And I try to, I can't really see the path forward. 
Like, I have no idea what the next subject on this podcast is going to be. I'm probably going to make something up. Maybe something about Mario Kart. Just because that's a driving thing and we bought a Wii U. But my brain just loosely connects things. And it's it's kind of crazy how <laughs> how bad some of these podcasts probably are. Where you just... Because I, I don't want any dead space. I don't... I feel like if you stop talking... Then people go, oh, he stopped talking for five seconds. Podcast is over. <laughs> Whereas everyone probably has already been like, I don't even know what he was talking about. Um, I try not to use too many filler words as if, uh, like like the word like. I try not to say that or sort of or kind of, you know, to make, you, oh, you know, I do that too much. Um, speaking of the brain, though, I watched this interesting video about how to make hard work uh, help with your dopamine levels. And it was really interesting because it's always been something that I've been thinking about and I could never really back it up with any science because I'm not a scientist, but watching this, cause it's a Stanford researcher, I believe who did this. It made me feel kind of good because there used to be in, in college, I had to read this poem in German and I can't remember what it was called, and it's really going to bother me. But the whole point of the poem, or I guess it wasn't a, was it a poem or a short story? The whole point of it, the piece of literature, uh, was that at the end, it's not so much the, the action of doing what you're, what you've been waiting for. It's more the anticipation buildup. That's the real high. And this is loosely connected to that because this, this video, the, well, to finish that point that poem ends with someone like jumping off a bridge and then before they actually hit the water to die the poem ends so it it literally ends with them falling in the air and i i was always like why was it why did it end there and we had to explain this in german and i i said something like in my broken german i said something like uh the the movie and i'll do an english I'll say it in English with a German accent because I can't remember any German right now. Uh, the reason that the, the the short story ends with the person falling in motion, and I am now Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is actually Austrian, is because it is about the anticipation, which is the real climax of the story, as opposed to the climax that you may believe, which is the point of the action taking place. And I said it in German, I was like, I don't think that made any sense. And all the people in my class, they didn't really speak German too well, so they probably were like not listening. But my teacher, who did speak German, <laughs> luckily, it's great to have a teacher who speaks the language they're supposed to be teaching. He just kind of looked at me and I thought, oh man, I didn't make any sense. Or I said something really offensive somehow. And he goes, das ist echt so geil. Which is like, that's so cool. Because he had never thought about it that way. And I thought, Sign me up for number one German literature analyzer if you want. Uh, anyway, bringing it back to the video that I watched. People, when they have a goal at the end of something. So let's say that you, you know, you win the World Cup. The moment at the end is you win the cup and you lift it up. It's not good to have the main focus on the reward because otherwise your, your whole dopamine is spiked at the reward. So the example they gave was you took a group of kids who liked drawing. So if you like something, when you do it, your dopamine levels are going to increase. And they took those kids who liked drawing and told them if they finished the drawing, they would get a Sunday. And so they would do the drawing, then they get the Sunday and they, they measured the dopamine levels and the dopamine would rise when they got the Sunday. And then they took away the Sunday. And suddenly the dopamine levels for the kids drawing, they stopped drawing or they didn't like it or the dopamine levels dropped. Even though these were people who before any reward was placed in front of them, people, the kids, um, they would have dopamine levels that were higher because they enjoyed the activity. This is the idea of getting stuck in with, with a football match, right? So you have to enjoy the actual activity because if you're enjoying the activity, then your dopamine levels are going to be higher and it reduces the time that you have to wait. So, if you're thinking, you know, I want to get jacked so then I have a six pack, your ultimate goal is to get the six pack. 
but you're not going to have you're not going to really enjoy the work and if you don't enjoy something you're likely going to stop doing it because why would you do something you don't enjoy so you either suffer through a bunch of work that you don't enjoy just to get a six pack at the end which by the way six packs they don't they don't do it's not that great for you like it's it's nice to be ripped and everyone has their own opinion on it but it's just not the healthiest like i tried to drop a bunch of weight just to try to get abs and the whole time i was just feeling weak and just not good so anyway i digress again for the 15th time this video but if you start to enjoy the pain or the agony of hard work then your dopamine will increase during that it's almost like runner's high you know when you're i think i've only had runner's high once because i don't really run that much but i can think back to it and i can almost feel my dopamine levels rising just from thinking back to that experience which is kind of cool it wasn't about finishing that run which was really hard and like drinking the glass of water that i was desperately in need of or resting the best experience that i take away from that or the best memory i take away from that experience is that moment where i thought i'm doing this hard work you know which is really weird because most people don't want they, they want to be uh, hard work sounds awful i want to lie on a beach but then you lie on the beach and you're kind of just like well now what you know you don't have anything to to really look forward to if you're at the end goal this reminds me of that episode of uh, Blue Mountain State. Great show. If no one ever watched it, if you're in high school, you have to watch that because it just completely does not prepare you for what college really is like. Um, but <laughs> when when they reach the, what is it? The quarterback wins a, wins a big football game and then he spends like the night at a sorority house and he's like, this is the peak. And he's feeling sad because he's like, I'm at the peak. That means everything can only go down from here. You never want to be at the peak. You always want to be in anticipation of the peak. But the peak always needs to be going. It's it's almost like a, a, a carrot that you're constantly chasing. It's, it's this weird thing where you have to trick your brain into thinking that you're going to reach it. Because if you can never reach the carrot, you're not going to be happy. If you can never reach climax or can never reach the, the point where you're happy... You're never going to be happy. But if you can trick yourself into thinking, I will get there and I'll, be, I'll enjoy the path, the journey along the way. That's the most important thing. Do you guys actually, are people watching this? Like, is someone watching this and going, yeah, this man with the hat, he's, he's really on something here. <laughs> because I'm, I'm thinking through this and I'm kind of like, this makes sense to me. But also at the same time, I'm like, man, you talk so much. There's a mosquito in my room. I think the mosquito is telling me that the the podcast should end. Um, we're trying to do these for about an hour, but you know, when it's by yourself, the rambling can only go on for so long. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, though. Let me know other topics that you want from future podcast episodes. Uh, maybe we become a true crime and we just analyze true crime and go to a site and figure out who murdered whom. Because that's that's what we can do. I have the hat already. I'm basically Sherlock Holmes at this point. Or we could become a, I don't know, a lifestyle and fitness. How would you do a lifestyle and fitness podcast? All right, give drop and give me 20 push-ups. <laughs> but it's just the audio of it. One, two, five. I think listening to one of these podcasts would be so much stranger than just watching one of these. Is that, does that make any sense? At, at any rate, okay. We've gone long enough. Thank you guys for watching it. Leave me other comments, other topics that you want to hear me cover. Cam will be back from his extravagant adventure. We'll, we can ask him about Omega Ball and see where that goes. But uh, appreciate the time. As always, lads, don't forget to spare pets.